Good morning, Mom. Good morning, BPED 1B. Today, I will discuss the Module 2, Basic Concepts of Disaster and Disaster Risk. Lesson 1, Disaster and Disaster Risk. First, let's define the disaster. Disaster is a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or a society involving widespread of human, material, economic, or environmental losses and impacts, which exceeds the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. When the disaster happens, a disaster happens when a hazard impacts upon a vulnerable population and causes damage, casualties, and disruption. An earthquake in an inhabited desert cannot be considered a disaster. No matter how strong the intensity may be, an earthquake is only a distress when it affects people, their properties, and activities. Disaster risk. Disaster risk is, is the potential disaster losses in lives, health status, livelihoods, assets, and services which could occur to a particular community or a society over some specified future time of period. The definition of disaster risk reflects the concept of the disasters as, a, as the outcome of continuously present condition of a risk. Disaster risk comprises different types of potential losses which are often difficult to Quantify. Disaster and disaster risk, it is important to consider the social and economic context in which disaster risk occur and that the people do not necessarily share the same perceptions of risk and their underlying risk factor. Acceptable risk and second is residual risk. So what is acceptable risk? Acceptable risk or tolerable risk is Therefore, an important subterm, the extent to which a disaster risk is deemed acceptable or tolerable, tolerable depends on existing social, economic, political, cultural, technical, and environmental conditions. In engineering terms, acceptable risk is also used to assess and define the structural and non-structural measures that are needed in order to reduce possible harm to people, property, services, and system to a chosen tolerated level. According to codes or accepted practice which are based on known probabilities of hazard and other factors. Second is residual risk. Let's define the residual risk. It's the disaster risk that remains even when effective disaster risk reduction measures are in place and for which emergency response and recovery capabilities must be maintained. The presence of residual risk implies a continuing need to develop and support effective capabilities and capacities for emergency services, preparedness, response, and recovery together with socioeconomic policies such as a safety nets and risk transfer mechanism as part of a holistic approach. So, natural disaster. Natural disaster are large-scale geological or meteorological events that have the potential to cause loss of life or property. These types of disaster include tornadoes and severe storms, hurricanes and trop tropical storms, flood, wild fires, earthquakes, and drought. The factors of natural disaster is number one, global warming. Number two, natural activities in the Earth's crust. Number three, tectonic movement. Four, moon activity. Five is mining. Six, deforestation. Seven, soil erosion. Eight, seismic activity. Nine is air pressure. Ten, ocean currents. And lastly, eleven is population. Now we come to the effects of natural disaster. Effects of natural disaster, number one, environmental issues. These are the severe effects of natural disaster on the whole environment system. Two, humanitarian crisis. Humanitarian crisis, natural crisis lead to humanitarian catastrophes 
all over the world. This includes an increase of famine and also to the spread of disease, especially in poor developing countries since they will often not be able to flight the consequences of natural disaster in an effective way due to a shortage and resources and also due to a lack of a technological knowledge. Number three, damages of infrastructure. Natural disaster usually also imply great damage to the affected infrastructure. This includes the destruction of important buildings like hospital and airports and so on number four public health issues and disease natural disaster often destroy many important facilities that are me meant to keep living conditions stable five is food scarcity another effect of natural disaster can be scarcity of resources which especially serve severe when it comes to the supply of food we have also number six water scarcity another related issue in the topic of water scarcity due, due to natural disaster natural water sources like rivers or lakes may be polluted and thus the water supply will decrease dramatically seven is displaced population Good day everyone. Today I will discuss about prevention, control, and mitigation some common natural hazard. First, earthquake. We cannot prevent natural earthquakes from occurring but we can significantly mitigate their effects by, the, by identifying hazard, building safer structure, and providing education on earthquake safety. By preparing for natural earthquakes, we can also reduce the risk from human-induced earthquakes. Second, floods. Floods can be controlled by re redirecting excess water to purpose-built ca canals or floodways which in turn divert the water to temporary holding ponds or other bodies of water where there is a lower risk of impact to flooding. This will help prevent flooding. Third is drought. Drought-like condition can be overcome by better water harvests techniques certain percolation can be taken in drought prone areas which relate to management of water resources proper agriculture technique and rele relief by different agency manage of water resources conservation of water through rain rainwater harvesting building check dumps bands etc proper agriculture technique Increase use of drought resisting corpse. For cyclones, the occurrence of cyclones is natural phenomenon over which human have no control, hence it cannot be prevented. However, some scientists have speculated the rise in global warming may cause increased occurrence of the cyclones. The devastating effect of cyclones can only be controlled and mitigated through some effective policies such as advanced technology, hazard reduction in initiative, and relief measure. Fifth is landslide. Landslide is a natural phenomenon and may occur without human interference. In certain cases, human activities like deforestation and mining, etc. can also induce landslide. Landslide can be controlled to some extent by adapting initiative such as providing slope support and minimizing human encroachment. Human cause disaster. Human made disaster is disaster resulting from man made hazard as opposed to natural disaster resulting from natural hazard. It means a disaster or emergency situation that result in civilians, population, population casualties, loss of property, loss of basic service and means of livelihood of result of water or sea, war or civil strife. Man-made disasters are mainly of two types. First, local disaster. Second, industrial and technological disaster. Lesson 3. How and when an event becomes disaster. Element at risk. A social element is said to be at risk when, when it's exposed to hazard and it's likely to be 
adversely affected by the impact of those hazards when they occur. People are described as element at risk after risk assessment. A methodology to determine the nature and extent of risk by analyzing potential hazard and evaluating existing condition of vulnerability that together could potentially harm exposed people, property, service, livelihood, and the environment on which they depend. Risk assessment. 